Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to store file path into SQL Server table using SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how we can store the file path into SQL Server table. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Fahad Rao and he asked a similar question. So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's jump to the demo. This is my D files location and in this particular location I got two files emails.csv and emails underscore current date time dot csv so what I want to do I want to import all the files from this particular location into a table email table into SQL server instance so I got the SQL server instance and I got a test database so I want to import all the data from the csv files into this particular database in a new table okay and there should be an additional column created uh, which we can call maybe file path and that file path should contain the actual path of the file that is being loaded so that we can easily identify like which data is imported from which file okay so maybe if you want to see the file like what kind of data we, it contains so I can open this particular file and it contains person's ID first name last name email and gender okay so the first file it contains 1000 records and the second file it contains only 500 records okay so there should be total 1500 records so let me open the SSIS package. So this is my blank SSIS package that I'll be using today. And uh, the first of all, what I will do, I will create a file path SSIS variable here. So I can call it as file path, the new SSIS variable. And the data type will be a string, of course, because I want to store the path of the file. So we can give an initial value to this one. Maybe I can give as email, the files emails.csv and I can provide the default value here okay now I can close this one now the first thing that I will do is that we will use a for each loop container because we want to loop through all the files in a folder so that's why we will be using a for each loop container now we can configure the for each loop container here because we want to loop through the files so we will be using the for each loop file enumerator okay and uh, now we need to provide the location of the files like in which location the files are situated so my files are situated inside the files location so I will provide this location here now we need to provide like what type of file you want to import so I want to import the CSV file so that's why I given star.csv here and it will import only the CSV files from this particular folder now I can go to the variable mapping and from here I will select the SSIS variable file path that I created so now what it will do whatever file it will read it will just get the file path and it will assign the file path to the file path SSIS variable okay so I can click on okay so we have configured the for each loop container now it's time to configure the data flow task because data flow task will be used to import the data so I can just open the data flow task and then I can configure it because in the data flow task we will read the data from the flat file so we will use a flat file source here now we can configure the flat file source click new to create a new flat file connection manager and then we can browse the file so the file type is csv so we'll select csv here we can select any of the file from here if you click on preview so the data seems good here so i can click on ok ok now because you want to store the data into a sql server table so that's why we'll, we need to use the oledb destination here ok so we can just drag and drop the OLEDB destination here but before configuring the OLEDB destination we also need to use the drive column transformation because in the drive column transformation we will add a new column file path into the data flow okay so let's connect the flat file source with the drive column transformation and now let's configure the drive column transformation here we can just click on the plus sign here and we can just drag and drop the file path into exploration so a new column will be created here okay and uh, we can call this new column as file path okay but if you look at the data type so it's the data type by default it's taking as unicode string you know n vector and the length is only 19 so maybe we need to uh, convert it to you know vector because all the data in the csv it's of vector type so that's why it will be better if you convert the data type to vector and maybe length we should increase to maybe 500 or something okay because the file name can be lengthy so to typecast it what we, we can do 
uh, there is a function here if you click on the type class so there is a function to type class it to a string so we can just drag and drop dt underscore str function here and the length we can give maybe 500 and the code page is 1252 for the uh, worker so I can give code page 1252 here now you can see that it got converted to the worker 500 okay so that's the main thing that we need to do now we can click on okay now I can just connect the drive column with the OLEDB destination right click OLEDB destination and co configure this one click new to create a new OLEDB connection manager there is already one connection to the test database so I can select this connection from data access mode we will select table or view fast load we can click new to create a new SQL server table okay so if you see here in the test database right now we don't have any email table okay so I want to create a new email table here so email table right now does not exist okay I can copy the email name from here the table name from here now I can call this table as email okay and it has taken like ID first name last name email gender from the flat file metadata and because we added one additional column file path as well into the data flow so that's why it has taken its name as well so I can click OK and it will create an email table so the table got created now if you re-execute this query so you can see a table here but the table is empty as of now I can go back to the SSIS package and I can click on mappings so you can see that all the input columns have been mapped with the destination columns automatically so that seems good now I can click on OK now the thing is the flat file connection manager it is hard coded as of now because it will only load the data from the email table as of now so what we can do we can right click on it go to the properties and uh, we can go to expressions and from the property you will select the connection string property and we can click on these three dots and we can assign the value to the connection string property from the file path SSIS variable click evaluate expression we have assigned the value from the file path because the value of the file path will change for every iteration of the for each loop so that's why it can import the another file as well so this is done now I can click on ok ok now our SSIS package is done what it will do the for each loop container it will loop through all the files from this particular folder and will get the file path and will assign the file path to the SSIS variable file path okay if you see here this is the file path variable now when the for each loop container will run it will run all the task inside the for each loop which is the data flow task okay and in the data flow task it will get the data from the flat file using the flat file connection manager and because the uh, connection manager is dynamic we, we are getting the path from the file path variable so that's why this value can change for each file okay and in the drive column transformation we are uh, getting the name of the file path from the variable so this value can also change and then using the OLEDB destination we are writing the data into the SQL server table so that is the overall package so let me click on the start button and let me show you like how the package will work so the package ran fine first time it imported 1000 records and second time it imported 500 records from the another file so let me go back to the SSMS and let me execute the query so you can see that so you can see that we got an additional column file path here and the value is d files emails dot csv okay and if you scroll more so after 1000 records uh, you know the name of the file should change so after 1000 records uh, we got the another file 2023 this, this is the second file you know this file that we loaded and there should be only 500 records from this particular file okay so because the file number is started from the 501 okay so that's why there are just 500 records in this particular file and the total number of records are 1500 okay so this is one of the method like how we can import the file path along with the data into the SQL server table yeah, so I will share uh, both the files with you and you can test the same process at your machine using the SSIS package and if you have any question then you can comment on the video yeah so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much